Alright YouTube, so let's talk about Kingdom Hearts 2. So as I've said on the channel plenty of times, I've never played Kingdom Hearts 2. Growing up, I played Kingdom Hearts 1 several times. And pretty much to completion, me and a friend played through it and did... I believe everything there was to do in the original Kingdom Hearts back then, other than maybe like a proud mode playthrough, if that was in the old version of the game, I don't remember. But we definitely did like everything uh, all the way up to like fighting Sephiroth and shit. It was available in the pre-Final Mix version of the game. And I really, really loved Kingdom Hearts 1, and I don't have a reason for why I never played Kingdom Hearts 2 or the rest of the franchise, really, because I was a big fan of the first game. And then randomly back in 2019, whenever Kingdom Hearts 3 came out, I was like, fuck it, let's play it. And I did not know... A goddamn thing that was happening. I didn't understand anything in the game, barely, besides some of the characters that I recognized and things. Now that I play Kingdom Hearts 2, I still don't really know what's going on, because it is a kind of complicated story across all the games. Um, and I've only done the one playthrough of Kingdom Hearts 2, so I didn't... I'm not, obviously not going to pick up on everything through one playthrough. And I didn't play Chain of Memories, or at least I attempted to play Rechain of Memories, and I just didn't like it. I, I, I tried it, you know, several sessions getting you know, a handful of hours into the game through a couple of the worlds and a couple of boss fights. And I just, the gameplay loop of Kingdom Hearts Rechain of Memories was just not fun to me. So I kind of skipped it. I watched like a video kind of recapping the story of it. And I don't know how much of that stuck with me. <laughs> I know sort of the basics, of course, like you meet Organization 13, Castle Oblivion. And I believe with Chain of Memories, that's where you first meet Roxas and Nominee and stuff like that. But I didn't, you know, I don't fully know what all happens in the game, if I'm totally honest with you. And then going into Kingdom Hearts 2, there's a lot of stuff that's hard to wrap your head around. And it's probably easier if you do play Chain of Memories. But there's just a lot of characters. I mean, it opens up with, like, you know, Roxas and his group in uh, Twilight Town. Which was, it was kind of cool. Like, I've seen people talk about what, whether or not they prefer Traverse Town or uh, Twilight Town. And I definitely like Twilight Town more. And it's kind of cool to see like Final Fantasy characters right out the gate with like Cypher and his group from Final Fantasy VIII and of course little VV. And to be honest, I really love the concept of the nobodies. That like whenever somebody becomes a heartless, obviously their body's left behind and that's what becomes a nobody. Like that idea is pretty cool. It's something I never thought about when playing the first Kingdom Hearts. I mean, I never really looked too hard into the lore of Kingdom Hearts. But I never thought about like what happens to like their, I guess their body. And like that's kind of interesting that they came up with an idea for it. Of course, when it comes to like Kingdom Hearts 2 and I guess also Chain of Memories, Roxas is Sora's nobody and Namine is Kairi's nobody, which I already knew about Roxas for a long time now, for years now, that he was like a, a Sora essentially or whatever. I've known that for a very long time. I don't know if I even knew the character of Namine. I don't know if I've ever seen her before. Also, because I know like a bit of the lore for Kingdom Hearts, but also having played Kingdom Hearts 3, I knew that Axel was a good guy. And I know he's like a fan favorite character. And I think like his eventual turn to kind of the good side towards the end of the game would have been a lot better had I not known that he was eventually going to be a good guy. That said, he is still a great character. And I can understand why a lot of people do like the character of Axel. When it comes to the beginning of the game, I do like that you get to play as Roxas. That's pretty cool. It is kind of slow. And I thought I was like, it was just maybe a me thing, but looking into it, like I've seen people talk about how slow it is. And it is quite lengthy. Like if you look up, you know, Kingdom Hearts 2, Final Mix, the movie or whatever on YouTube, where it just has, like, all the cinematics from the game, all the conversations and shit. It's, like, over two hours until Roxas wakes up Sora at the end of, like, the opening segment of the game, right? It's, like, two hours and five minutes, I believe. And that is absolutely zero gameplay. So if you factor in gameplay, the opening segment of controlling Roxas is, like, two and a half to potentially three hours before you actually control Sora. And that was a bit of a negative just because I already know that I'm going to play as Sora in this game. I know who Roxas is, but I know that I'm playing through the game as Sora. And I'm just kind of like, kind of want to get to that point. I'm like, where, when do we get to Sora? When, when does that happen? And it just kept going like day two, day three. Like, Anyways, I'm not really here to give like a recap of like the story of Kingdom Hearts 2 because I would be the wrong person for that entirely. But I just kind of want to talk about like the things that I did and didn't like about the game. Because I found myself comparing Kingdom Hearts 2 to Kingdom Hearts 1 as I was playing through it. I wasn't even initially... You know, going to do a video on Kingdom Hearts 2, but as I kept going, I kept thinking, like, do I like this more than Kingdom Hearts 1? I like this less than Kingdom Hearts 1. I started taking notes, and I figured, hey, let's do a video. When it comes to the conversation of the Kingdom Hearts franchise, it's pretty unanimous across the board, I would say, that Kingdom Hearts 2 is the best game in the series. At least that's what everybody claims. And after having played it, I'm inclined to agree. I think in pretty much every way that I can think of, it's better than Kingdom Hearts 1. That doesn't mean that I like everything about Kingdom Hearts 2. There are some things that I'm a little indifferent on. But for the most part, yeah, I can definitely agree that it's the best game in the franchise. Having played Kingdom Hearts 3, it's definitely better than that game. 
So some of the newer stuff from Kingdom Hearts 1 to Kingdom Hearts 2, we have the reaction commands and the drive forms. When it comes to the reaction commands, I'm a little bit... I don't know how I feel about them. Because they're kind of fun, but at the same time, it's kind of boring. It's almost like QTE stuff in other games. Especially, like, when you fight, like, Zimnus, I think is his name, at the end of the game. Like, the final fight you do with him and, like, the final form when you fight him when it's, like, you and Riku alone fighting him. I mean, the majority of that fight is just reaction commands. It's just you hitting triangle for 90% of the fight. And then it's a little bit of fighting. It's like Some of the other boss fights throughout the game and, like, some of the silhouette fights, there's just, like, a gimmick to them. And I'm not the biggest fan of that either. Like, I just want to fight. I just want you to have, like, a crazy attack pattern that I got to learn and block and guard at certain times and stuff like that. I don't want to do, like, these mini-games during fights. And some of them are. Like, there's the reaction command stuff, but there's also, like, mini-games in some of the fights throughout the game. And I'm just like, what is going on? I just, want to, I just want to fight. Like, the combat overall feels better than Kingdom Hearts 1. But why... What's with, like, the like the first silhouette you unlock the, that you fight the first, like, Organization 13 silhouette guy? Like, he has the book mini game where you get pulled into the book and then, like, you lose your commands and you gotta, like, turn the pages in the book and, like, find your commands again and stuff. And I'm just like, what are we doing, dude? This is so weird. And some of the other fights, too. Like, there's the Organization 13 guy that has the guitar that summons the water creatures or whatever like the first time i fought him is fine in the underworld whatever the second time i fought him i lost because i didn't destroy all the water guys in time and like why is that a thing like what there's a lot of fights like that where it's like you got to do a certain thing in a certain amount of time or whatever or you lose and it's like okay i can't understand that with stuff like if we were to go to like you know final fantasy 7 remake for example with like bahamut like he counts down to mega flare right and if you're not prepared for it the mega flare is going to kill you and that's game over it's like okay that makes sense but like when it comes to, like, the water guy, for example, why am I losing? Like, if there's one little water form dude left and the time runs out, what causes my game over? That's what I want to know. That's why it's stupid. I don't like it. I think it's just mostly the Organization 13 fights, but there's, like, Luxord in The World That Never Was that has, like, the cards, and you gotta, like, find him in the cards, and there's other, like, minigame aspects of his fight, and there was... I think the one that's in, like, the, the Beast Castle, it's like the Scythe one where it's like you have only so many hits you can take and then you instantly lose. And I guess that one can make some sense. Maybe it's, you know, he's killing you with that last hit or whatever, but it's still like, why, why is the stipulations here, man? It's almost like you can't find a way to make the fights hard in the game, so we gotta add, like, a stipulation that can cause you to lose as opposed to actually just losing the fight. When it comes to the drive forms in the game, I actually really liked him. My only complaint really is that you have to level them up in specific ways, which I didn't know that, you know, because I was trying to go through as blind as I could playing through the game for the first time. So I was switching over to these other, like, drive forms, thinking I'm leveling them up, and I wasn't progressing them at all because, like, for, like, the master form, you have to, like, collect drive orbs. For, like, the limit form, you have to use the specific attacks, like strike rate or whatever it was uh, that you have in limit form. And then, like, some of them are just, like, basic, like, getting hits or getting kills or whatever. Those are kind of easy, of course. But I just didn't realize that as I was playing through the majority of the game until I started looking up, like, how the fuck do I level this damn thing? And learning that there's, like, specific things you got to do to level them up. And speaking of drive forms, uh, I think it's not controversial to say that I fucking hate anti-form. Like, my god. When I was first playing the game, and I would turn into, like, this dark version of Sora, I thought it was kind of cool. I didn't know what it was exactly. I was just like, oh, this is kind of cool. Randomly, every now and then, I turn into this evil Sora, and he fights kind of, like, animalistic, and he looks kind of cool, whatever, whatever. And once I, you know, looked into the drive forms and had to level them, I learned what anti-form was, and then it became annoying. When I'm, like, trying to turn into a specific form to, like, level it, and I turn into anti-form, I'm like, God damn it! now I gotta either grind to get my drive gauge back up or use an item to get my drive gauge back up or hit a fucking reload from a save to have my drive gauge back because it was fucking wasted on anti-form speaking of anti-form while i was trying to record a little bit of gameplay of some of the drive forms for the video i got cucked by anti-form like three times in a goddamn row <laughs> But I got a trophy out of it, so I guess it wasn't so bad. There's some other random bits about combat. Guarding in Kingdom Hearts 2. I don't know if I just suck at it or something. I don't know what it is, but I just, I miss it a lot. Whereas I was pretty decent at it when I just recently finished Kingdom Hearts 1. I don't know if it's like the animation or time frame is different on the guarding. Because like, Kingdom Hearts 1, you just block, right? And then in Kingdom Hearts 2, Sora's got to like spin around and like block behind him. And I don't know if that makes it different or not. But I just was, wasn't very good at blocking in this game. 
Also, I'd read kind of online when I was looking stuff up for Kingdom Hearts 1, Kingdom Hearts 2, the, like, the companions kind of get worse as the series goes from, like, Kingdom Hearts 1 to 2 to 3, Donald and Goofy aren't as good. I can definitely vouch for that, at least with my playthrough of Kingdom Hearts 2. They just didn't, they're almost like a non-factor, it felt like, whereas the Kingdom Hearts 1, I could kind of rely on them in some of the harder fights that they were actually a part of. They were, were useful, like Donald healing me and stuff like that, and Goofy giving me his magic and stuff like that. As I, as I am right now, Goofy hasn't get, got the MP gift ability yet, so he wasn't kind of doing fucking anything throughout the game for me. Also conflicting opinions when it comes to magic in the series, where a lot of people think it gets worse as the games go, or at least that Kingdom Hearts 1 is better than 2. Um, for me personally, I did, didn't really care for the magic too much in Kingdom Hearts 2. I like how it's handling Kingdom Hearts 1, where it's just a fucking gauge, and every you know, spell costs a certain amount, and that was kind of it. Uh, the main thing I don't like is that Cure takes your entire MP bar, and you gotta wait for it to come back, or use like an Ether or something. I don't know why you change that. It's kind of weird because it's just annoying to have to like wait to heal or waste items to heal. And then also like the no arrow or Araga or anything like that for like protection in this game. You have reflect, which I guess is supposed to be kind of that, but just being able to like throw up the arrow spell in the first game and have like reduced damage for a set amount of time was nice. And just not having that key marks too was a little annoying for me with the way I play anyways. When it comes to traversing the world map, I definitely like it a hell of a lot better than Kingdom Hearts 1, which was just like a map, you select the world, and then you just warp there, or if you're close enough, you can just, I guess, do like the gummy ship mission to it or whatever. But just, just be able to like have the freedom to like drive around like this, even though it doesn't necessarily matter too much, it's still pretty fucking cool. And speaking of the gummy ship, the mini game I guess you could call it for Kingdom Hearts 2 is in every possible way better than Kingdom Hearts 1, which was kind of boring. Even as a kid when I played Kingdom Hearts 1, I didn't particularly like it. I did like, you know, crafting and creating my own gummy ship. That was kind of fun. Just kind of experimenting and stuff. But like the mini game itself was always just kind of boring. And this right here is actually pretty fun. I haven't fully dove into it. I pretty much just did the ones you had to do to get to the next world. And then you unlock missions for them. And I haven't done all the missions or anything. And I haven't unlocked all the treasure from all the gummy ship missions or anything like that. I haven't fully committed to it. But just as a mini game, it's just so much more fun than Kingdom Hearts 1. As for the worlds themselves, um... For the most part, I did like them all. I wasn't the biggest fan of us revisiting some worlds we went to in Kingdom Hearts 1. I only say that just because I wanted to visit, like, new worlds. And there are plenty of new worlds when it comes to Kingdom Hearts 2. But if you've been playing, like, the Kingdom Hearts games in order, like, go to Agrabah in Kingdom Hearts 2, right? It would typically be the third time we've gone there because we go there in Kingdom Hearts 1. You go there in Chain of Memories slash Rechain of Memories. Even though it's obviously drastically different to what the world was in Kingdom Hearts 1. We also go there in Kingdom Hearts 2. Obviously, the world is different designed and stuff like that. Like, the city of Agrabah is nothing like it was in Kingdom Hearts 1. But it's still, like, the third time we've gone to, like, Aladdin world, essentially, right? And same with, like, Halloween Town and Atlantica and stuff like that. And I'm just like, there's plenty of Disney properties. Could we not have done something else? Like Halloween Town, for example, I think is drastically better in the first game. The second game, you get to get, like, the Christmas side of the Nightmare Before Christmas story. And I guess that's kind of cool for what it is. But, like, the world is just not that interesting. And that, that can be said for some of the worlds when it comes to Kingdom Hearts 2. Like, I found some of the worlds in Kingdom Hearts 1 to be a lot better. Like, Halloween Town has so much more to it in Kingdom Hearts 1. And, like, it's just a very kind of small location in Kingdom Hearts 2. Not particularly fun to, like, explore or play. And while, like most people, I did not like Atlantica when it came to Kingdom Hearts 1. In Kingdom Hearts 2, it's just a place you go to for a minigame. It's not even, like, a world. Like, you just go there to do a fucking... QTE music minigame with Ariel. It's just like, that's not fun. You could have just not had this at all. <laughs> I can't appreciate though that the worlds we revisit are different. Like, we go to Halloween Town again, it's not the same Halloween Town from Kingdom Hearts 1. I do like that aspect of it, but there's just so many dizzy properties out there that you could have just done a completely new world instead of revisiting the old ones. Uh, but the new worlds that we explore, I think we're all pretty good. You know, getting to go to like uh, Mulan and like Lion King and uh, Beast Castle. We had Beast, obviously, in Kingdom Hearts 1, but he was at Hollow Bastion or whatever, right? We didn't get to actually go to, like, the, the Beauty and the Beast world, so that was kind of cool, stuff like that. I actually expanded on a couple things from Kingdom Hearts 1 in that aspect, because we had Beast as a companion in Hollow Bastion, and then we get a Beast world in Kingdom Hearts 2. You also had, like, Simba and Mushu as summons in Kingdom Hearts 1, and you get to go to their worlds in Kingdom Hearts 2, so that was pretty cool. I definitely like that. Actually, speaking of the worlds, I was surprised to see a Pirates of the Caribbean world, only because, you know, I didn't know what worlds were in this game exactly, because I've played Kingdom Hearts 3, which does have a Pirates of the Caribbean world, but it's like, why are we doing that? Like, there's so many Disney things out there. I know Pirates of the Caribbean's really popular, like the movies and shit. But like, there's just so many other things you could probably pull from from the Disney library. Like, why are we doing Pirates of the Caribbean again? It's fine in this game, because this game is the first one to do it. But, like, why did they do that in the third game? My favorite worlds overall, though, were probably Hall of Bastion and Olympus. 
because of some Final Fantasy characters. For one, in the Hall of Bastion section of the game and the story when you kind of go back and forth there, just so there's so many Final Fantasy characters. They're like a, a pretty much an integral part of the story in this game, which I absolutely loved. Whereas they were kind of a part of the story in the first game, uh, but they're mostly just in like Traverse Town. They're in like one location, and you see them a little bit here and there throughout the game, right? But when you go back to Hall of Bastion, like you're seeing Leon or Squall constantly, and you're talking like Yuffie and Sid and Aerith and Tifa and Cloud, like pretty often in the game. And also, you see Sephiroth in Hall of Bastion. Like Sephiroth is actually kind of in the story, whereas. When he came to Kingdom Hearts 1, he was just at you know, Olympus Coliseum. That's where all that's only where Cloud was, right? He was in one location. It wasn't really a part of the actual story too much other than kind of trying to help Hades, I guess. I do want to clarify, too, really quickly, that in Kingdom Hearts 1, you do see Final Fantasy characters outside of Traverse Town because you do see, like, Yuffie and Aerith and maybe more of them in Hall of Bastion because that's, at least in the Final Mix version, I don't know if that's different from the original version. But, like, Aerith in, like, the library in Hall of Bastion is where you get Kiraga and Yuffie's also in the library comes to olympus and underworld you have Orin, who's a part of like the story and the narrative there and he's also like your companion right and that was pretty fucking cool like I, for the most of the game i pretty much just used goofy and donald because kind of what i did with kingdom Hearts one as well but when it came to underworld i almost exclusively used Orin with one of the other two uh just because it's Orin. getting to have like a final fantasy character as a companion in kingdom hearts was fucking awesome and what a nice touch too you have Orin in underworld because of course Orin is dead right at least when it comes to final fantasy 10 and it's cool to have the actual voice actor back who does the voice for Orin from Final Fantasy X. You're just getting a little bit of that more FF10. I'm always going to be appreciative of that shit. But also like the story for Orin when it came to Olympus slash Underworld, where it's essentially what Hades did with Cloud in the first game, where he's trying to hire Cloud or Orin to kill Hercules. And Orin declines him, at least on the first visit to Olympus when you come back there. He's, like, under the control of Hades. And I know when it comes to the story of the Olympus section that Hercules is, like, tired and exhausted from doing all these fights in the Colosseum. But regardless of that, Orin's whooping his ass at the, at the end of the Hades Cup when it's just 1v1 with him and Orin. Like, if not for Sora and in the, in the group intervening and getting, you know, Orin his, like, self-control back or whatever from Hades, like, Orin would have fucking killed Hercules, dude. Orin's a beast. Actually, speaking of Final Fantasy X, when it comes to Hollow Bastion, which has a shit ton of Final Fantasy characters, we actually have little tiny versions of Yuna, Riku, and Pain who were like initially helping Maleficent, uh, which was a nice surprise just because I didn't know they were in the game. Like I knew prior to playing Kingdom Hearts 2 that Orin was in the game. I just didn't know where he was, what location, what world, anything, what story he had, or nothing. I just knew he was in the game at some point as a companion. But it was a nice surprise just because I didn't know that they were a part of this game. Hop back to Olympus, I was a little mixed on the Coliseum as well. It's another thing that I wasn't particularly overwhelmingly enjoying when it comes to Kingdom Hearts 2. Only because it's another section of fights where there's like stipulations, right? Because like the first round, of the first cup or whatever for the Coliseum and Underworld is relatively normal. You have, you know, Donald and Goofy and, but there's like, you collect orbs for points or whatever it was. But like the second cup, the Cerberus Cup I believe it is, you fight solo with Sora you can use all of your drive forms, and they the drive gauge fills up a lot faster, but there's like a time limit. So the first time I did it, I lost at the end fighting Cerberus because of the time right now. And it's like, why is there a stipulation? I just want to fight. Like, I'm fine with that for like harder versions of the cups like Kingdom Hearts 1 had, right? There's like, you have the individual cups in Kingdom Hearts 1, and there's like harder versions of them where you fight with Sora solo, and then Sora solo with the time limit. Like, I'm fine if they wanted to do that for this, but by default having stipulations for the cups, not a fan of it. Actually, another negative that I just remembered is that you don't gain XP in these cups, which is, like, weird. Like, why do that? Because when it comes to Kingdom Hearts 1, this is, like, my favorite thing was, like, Olympus and the Coliseum. I just love doing that. Those fights were always fun, and, like, doing them solo with Sora with, like, the time limit stipulation and stuff like that to unlock, like, some good rewards. But you could also use it for level grinding, and you can't in this game. And there's also stipulations by default, and I was like, ugh. To the point right now that I haven't even finished all the cups when it comes to the game, and I finished the story for Kingdom Hearts 2. Um, I might, I could probably hop back into it now and probably body it or something. It'd probably be really easy, but it's just like, I don't want to just fight with these stipulations. I think like the the third cup has like some sort of like summon boost or something like that. I don't remember if you're fighting with Donald and Goofy or not, but I just want to, I just want to fight. I was, I was so excited to get to the Coliseum in this game, and then it's like different than it was in Kingdom Hearts 1, which kind of sucks. Some other random bits of things that I did and didn't like when it came to Kingdom Hearts 2. Uh, finding maps was kind of pointless. In most areas, you'll find a map pretty quickly. So it's like, why not just have it there by default? It seems almost pointless to have to find it in a giant treasure chest that you can't miss. Um, that said, though, I did like the implementation of a mini-map. Not that any of the areas have ever been complicated when it comes to Kingdom Hearts 1 or 2. But it's having a little mini-map in the corner. It's kind of nice. I definitely missed having tech points in this game. Even though I wasn't the best at guarding when it came to Kingdom Hearts 2. It's something I did a lot in Kingdom Hearts 1, right? It was pretty decent at blocking when I needed to and just getting that additional XP was nice and it's something that was definitely missing this game I don't know why 
they would remove that. It was really easy to farm extra XP when it came to Kingdom Hearts 1, and that's probably why they would remove it, but it was also a reward for engaging and blocking when it came to the game, so it's just kind of ridiculous to remove it, in my opinion. It's a small detail, but something I love is the custom HUDs they have in all the different worlds. In the bottom left corner, you kind of had it a bit in Kingdom Hearts 1, but it's mostly whenever your character's like appearance changes, depending on the world that they're in, like source picture in the bottom right corner would be different in Kingdom Hearts 1. And it still is the same thing when it comes to this game, but in the bottom left corner where you have your attacks and all that stuff, like it's all different depending on the world that you're in. It's a nice detail. Something else I absolutely love about the game is that you are rewarded constantly after like important fights, boss fights, and just other kind of important fights in the game. Like you'll win the fight and you don't level up, but you'll just gain something. You'll just get like plus five HP to Sora, or Sora will learn like a new ability, or Donald and Goofy will learn some new ability, or their stats will go up, or whatever the fuck. And that, that's just kind of cool. Like you're always progressing. Even when you're not leveling up, you're constantly gaining shit throughout the game. And I fucking love that. Overall, my favorite thing about Kingdom Hearts 2 was the implementation of the Final Fantasy characters, man. That's why I started playing the franchise initially back in the day when the first game came out. Obviously, I didn't continue playing the games until now. But that's why I started playing it. That's why I'm playing through the games right now, is the Final Fantasy characters. And they give you a lot of them when it comes to Kingdom Hearts 2, which retroactively makes Kingdom Hearts 3, like, even worse. Now that I see, like, as the story, kind of the series went on, they used more of the Final Fantasy characters, and then they get to Kingdom Hearts 3, and they're like, here's none. I think there might be some in Remind or something, but I never played it. But with the base game of Kingdom Hearts 3, there's absolutely zero. There's no Coliseum either, and there's no Sephiroth fight, and there's no Final Fantasy characters. And I fucking hated it. And I loved how much the Final Fantasy characters were in this game. I haven't done the Sephiroth fight yet in this game. I did beat the Sephiroth fight in Kingdom Hearts 1, which was pretty cool to do, just because I, I couldn't do it as a kid. And I know he's, I think, harder in this game, and I'm definitely not the required level or the recommended level to fight him yet. I haven't even attempted it yet. But I do know, like, the, the cutscene that plays afterwards with, like, him and, and Cloud and Tifa and stuff. I've seen that. I've seen montages of people getting fucked up by Sephiroth in Kingdom Hearts 2. So I kind of know sort of the basics of what goes on there and, like, the fight and the cutscenes and stuff. But I haven't attempted it myself. I haven't really done kind of any of the hard shit in the game, really. I've just kind of beat the story a little bit earlier and then hopped right into making this video. As I said towards the beginning, I can agree with everybody that this is the best game in the series. I've only played Kingdom Hearts 1, 2, and 3 in a little bit of Chain of Memories. But out of all that I've, you know, experienced, it's by far the best game that I've played out of them all. Do I understand everything that's happening? Absolutely not. I don't fully understand the story, and that's perfectly fine. Also, the cast in this game is great. I forgot to mention that earlier in the video, but Christopher Lee, Sir Christopher Lee, Sauron voices Anson the Wise, and I think Diz. And then I think Cam, it's Cam Clark that does Simba, but I know him as Ryudo in Grandia 2, one of my favorite RPGs of all time. I, I knew the voice, I just couldn't spot it, because I've been kind of slowly playing through Grandia 2 on the Switch, and I haven't played it in a while, but like I heard the voice whenever Simba was talking, I was like, who is that? And I had to Google it, and I was like, holy shit, it's fucking Ryudo. Hell yeah. There's plenty of other stuff we haven't talked about in the video, like the music. It's, of course, great when it comes to the Kingdom Hearts series. Dearly Beloved is such an iconic track. It's so, like, ingrained in my soul because how much I played Kingdom Hearts 1 back in the day. I think it's, I don't know if it's like the exact same track, but I think it's like Diddly Beloved 2 is like the title screen music for this game. But also like each of the main Kingdom Hearts games at least have like an iconic song associated with them, Simple and Clean with the first one. For this game, Sanctuary is pretty fucking good. I don't want to dare say that it's better than Simple and Clean, but I definitely really liked it. So whatever the song was that was associated with the third game was really damn good. I don't remember what it is right now off the top of my head. I could obviously Google it if I wanted to, but I used to actually listen to that song in my free time a lot. Oh man, I really enjoyed my time in Kingdom Hearts 2. It's definitely a great game. It's the best game in the series so far, at least that I've played. I can agree with everybody on that. I really don't know why I put off playing it for so long. It's I don't have a reason or excuse, as I said previously in the video. I just never did for some reason. So it's nice to finally like check that game off the list, right? It's one of those games that's always in the back of my mind. It's always like when I'm revisiting franchises or wanting to play some stuff again or thinking about games that I've never got to play or finish. Kingdom Hearts 2 is always there, and I just avoided it for so long for no particular reason, man. So it's nice to finally get to play it after like 15 plus years or some shit. Actually, the game's almost 20 years old. Actually, like 2006 here, at least in the U.S., it'll be 20 years old. Next year, it'll be 20 years old in Japan. Wild to think. I've... For the majority of my life, I've avoided this game. Don't know why. That's pretty much the video, my dudes. We talked quite a bit here about Kingdom Hearts 2. We didn't talk about everything involved in the game, of course. That wasn't really the point of the video. We didn't talk about all the worlds, right? I didn't talk about, like, the old school world within the Disney castle, which I absolutely love that world. It's kind of cool to see that retro, like, old school, like, cartoon style. The Tron world within Hall of Ashton was kind of whack, kind of boring. I guess it wasn't technically its own world, but it was just kind of whatever. I don't give a shit about Tron. There's plenty of stuff I have written down that I wanted to discuss that we didn't talk about in this video, but this is more so of just like turn on the camera and talk about the game. It wasn't like this in-depth, comprehensive review of the game or anything like that. 
I don't know yet if I'm gonna hop right into the next Kingdom Hearts game, which I believe is three five days eight three five eight. <laughs> I don't know yet if I'm going to hop right into the next Kingdom Hearts game, which I believe is 3, 5, 8 days over 2. I've been kind of no life Kingdom Hearts here for the last like month or so, finishing up Kingdom Hearts 1, hopping into Rechain of Memories, hopping into Kingdom Hearts 2. So I don't know if I want to take like a little bit of a break from the franchise and then kind of come back to it or if I'm going to continue playing. I don't know yet. We'll see. Anyways, that's the video, my dudes. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. Social networks in the description below. Follow me on Twitter, Dash David YT. That's it. Bye. Used to care what people thought, but now I care more. I and mean, nobody out here's got it figured out. So therefore, I've lost all hope of a happy ending. Depending on whether or not it's worth it. So insecure, no one's perfect. We spend it with no shame. We blow that like old train. We in here like low gain or leave it like old bang.